Welcome to Soul Cafe Radio. You are listening to From the Heart, a daily podcast designed to inspire, encourage, and educate the people of God. And now, here is your host, the Word Master. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whenever you're listening. You're tuning into Soul Cafe Studios presentation of From the Heart Podcast. Today we are continuing our mini series looking at prayer. Today we're up to the power of prayer. We're going to close out with the thought of the promise of prayer. So let's begin. In your Bibles, turn to James chapter 5, and we're going to be starting from the latter part of verse 16 towards Verse 17, the apostle says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. So on part one, I mentioned how important it is for us to understand, to appreciate, in fact, the invitation that we've been given to pray, the fact that Prayer is a privilege that many have been not taken advantage of. And hence, here we are in James where we see Elijah taking full advantage of the power of prayer. And notice what his prayer did. It accomplished a lot, if you know the narrative, in restoring Israel to a right relationship with God. Letting Israel understand that it's not because of their good looks, it's not because of their riches, it's not because of themselves, why they were prosperous. And as we see here, when God withdraws his hand, how they don't prosper. And in the midst of that, Elijah had to have a session with the people on Mount Carmel. And if you know the rest of the story, you know that, as I said later on, he prayed that it would rain. And while in the beginning, as it says, he is a man just like us. When Jezebel came for his head as he took the head of her prophets, rather than standing up, he ran. And so that last prayer was also a testament of faith as much as it was on the power of God. But that's what we want to talk about today, the power exhibited in prayer. And you know what would be a good thing? As we get ready to begin, those of you who are listening either on the audio or on YouTube, just to put in a comment, this brief testimony of how you had an experience when it came to the power of prayer. So if you want to pause right now and just go ahead and do that, go right ahead and just share your testimony of the goodness of God. On yesterday, I mentioned that this is where we're going to begin on my end. And so... This was back, wow, quite literally 30 years ago. I believe it was 30 years ago, either this month or next month. But anyhow, I had just came off of a period of fasting and prayer, and there was no food, nothing at all. I was just, it was a water fast, just drinking water for that time. And I remember when I went into prayer, close the fast, I was just there thanking God for keeping me, thanking God for sustaining me, thanking God for allowing me to maintain all that time. And in the midst of my prayer, I remember asking God to supply me of food that I would have later on. And my friends, 
there's a scripture that I read that says that while they're yet speaking, he will answer. That's what I'm telling you I experienced. In the midst of my prayer, there was a knock on my door, and my neighbor was bringing me fruit. My beloved, when I tell you that that incident stays rent-free on my mind because it exhibited to me the power of God. I could not let it go. I could not let it go. And it lets me have an appreciation of what we talked about yesterday. Being able to go boldly before the throne of grace and asking the Lord for what's needed. Imagine, my friends, imagine Elijah so disheartened by Israel's aversion or their, I don't even know what the word is, but they're straddling the fence and him saying to God, you know, God, the people are dependent upon the things of nature, and I guess they feel that it is because of their good looks, why it rains and their crops are so prosperous. Lord, please just hold back the range for a little bit so that they can see the dependence is upon you. And God hears, and God honors, and God answers. My friends, as I quite rightly mentioned on our part one episode, and if you haven't heard that, please go back and listen. Very important. But it's not because of us. And I remember, as I said, I prayed. I prayed for something that one time, and it didn't come to an end. I was devastated. But you know what, my friends? Like I said, if I was praying the right way, as I know other people were, when the family came back following, having laid her to rest, she died. If you remember what I was saying yesterday, she died. And it was one of the saddest experiences I've seen up to that point. But... When they came home, the family, they had a prayer session. They they had a period of oneness, and spiritual revival was a sight to behold. The power of prayer and the power of letting go and letting God. One of these days, we have to do a series again on that thought, letting go and letting God. But, my friends, I just want you to understand, I just want you to appreciate the fact that there's power in prayer. As I mentioned, this dear friend of mine, I remember distinctly talking to her. This was back in 2007. And she said the reason why maybe she believes that there's a God, but she can't believe in him is because as a child, she prayed for something. She was going through a hard time. As a young person, she prayed. She said she didn't get an answer. And that was that for God. But as I said on yesterday's program, once again, please, if you haven't listened, go back and listen. That there's a science. I didn't call it science, but that was the word that was on tip of my tongue that wouldn't come out. But there's a science to prayer. And notice what God says in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name, notice what they do, will humble themselves and seek my face and turn away from all their wicked ways. See again, the principle that would bring the rain back to Israel and bring the hearts of the people back to God. Will humble themselves and seek my face. Then, I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. There's a science to this, my beloved. God cannot be treated as a genie, and if he were to, on your request, all genie-like, not only would he be belittling himself, be cheapening himself, you would not be with him because of what he can do for you in terms of that which you need rather than that which you want. But this is how we need to be with God. We need to be so intimate like Elijah was when he prayed and had every confidence in the world that God would hear and that God would answer the prayer. Remember what we said earlier and we said it again from yesterday. We need to come boldly to the throne of grace and we need to believe, as it says there in Hebrews 11, that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I could understand you praying in a manner that you think that God would answer as a child. But as you mature physically, you're supposed to mature spiritually, emotionally as well. And that is when you understand that this power that comes with prayer has to be just like in our world when you filter all that power through a power plant. All that power has to be filtered somehow. And so it does not come to you unregulated. And that is why, beloved, the Lord lays out these terms. If my people will humble themselves and seek my face and turn. In Psalm 66, 
believe in 18. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Remember I said that God hears not just the prayers of the pious, but the prayers of the sinner. And many times when we get to the place of conversion and we have our Holy Ghost sanctified feelings, we forget that when we were sinners, it was out of the depths of our despair that the Lord heard us. And so now we come to a point where we're telling sinners, oh sinners, God won't hear you because you're dissing your death. There's no scripture in the Bible that condones that. All the Lord says is that if you're holding on to your sin and trying to talk about repentance, it's not going to work. It does not work that way, my friends. Like I said before, it does not work that way. We need to understand that prayer is so powerful. In fact, there's a statement that someone made one time that I've embraced so much because it is the truth. And when you hear it, you'll acknowledge it as the truth. Prayer is not preparing for warfare. Prayer is warfare. Remember in Ephesians 6, when the Apostle Paul lays out the gospel armor, as we call it, he uses terms like above all praying with. Prayer is not preparing for the warfare. Prayer is an integral part of the warfare. Beloved, whatever your situation is today, wherever you're going today, whatever you're doing today, tomorrow, the next day, whatever your plans, your goals, your dreams, your aspirations are, you dare not do it without talking to the Lord, having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Him. As we close out and as we wind down, I want to invite you, my friends, from my heart to yours to experience the power of prayer. Go to God. Go to Scripture. Investigate how these men and women were able to have incredible answers to prayer. And as another activity, as another activity, like I said earlier, please, if you can, share your testimony in the comments section of you experiencing the power of God. And then what I want you to do as an activity today or whenever you get a chance, just make sure you make a note of it. Look up on YouTube or wherever you watch videos and listen. Just type in and search in incredible answers to prayer, incredible answers to prayer, and just listen to those testimonies of the goodness of God. Because that's what it is, my beloved. That's what it is. It's not because of your words. It's not because of you doing all of these things that I mentioned before as part of the science. It's because of the goodness of God. See, the goodness is what allows him to tell you that if you come to me in a certain manner, if you come to me in a certain manner, I will in no way disregard your prayer. But you can't come to me anyhow. The Lord lays out the standard and we rise up to meet it. That's how you engage power, my friends. You go up to a fence and you see a sign that says danger, high voltage. You don't touch the fence. Of course not. And so this is how you deal with God. Remember, he is omnipotent, all-powerful. And he only deals with powerful answers to powerful prayers. And in the midst of whatever you're going through, my friends, in the midst of whatever you're going through, remember that there is power in your prayer. And I want to encourage you and I want to leave with you an appeal to make your prayer life more powerful. Stop praying these tame, lifeless prayers that don't reach the heart of the eternal, but engage in a relationship with God. Get to know God as it is your duty and privilege to do, so that when you pray and say, My Father, you mean it. I'm going to say to you right now, may God bless you abundantly as you continue to investigate, as you continue to explore these principles of prayer. As I say, we're going to close out our last episode in this mini-series here on From the Heart podcast. We're looking at the promise of prayer. And we're going to circle back to Second Chronicles 7.14 and other scriptures. Before I go, I want to ask you a favor, if you don't mind, please, please, please become a member of my Patreon. Please share the link. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Soul Cafe TV. Please share the link as well. Help me out. And like I said, we're going to grow this thing together. The numbers are down right now. The numbers are low. Don't look at the numbers. Just share the message. And I believe that others will be impacted as well. As promised from our Wellness Wednesday presentation, the Hope Beyond the Headlines emphasis 
on the antidote to deception website should be up by the time that you will hear part three of our message. So when you get a chance today or later on, please go and visit the antidote to deception.com and right there on the homepage, you'll have access to that feature, as I said then, that is a classic part of the website that has been on the back burner for some time, but needs to be back front and center. Hope beyond the headlines. Go and check it out and be encouraged. Thank you once again for joining me today here on Soul Cafe Studios from the Heart Podcast. This has been the Word Master wishing you a good and godly day. God bless. Thank you for joining us today on Soul Cafe Radio. You've been listening to powerful music and messages for the mind and soul. Join us next time when we deliver more of the same. And remember to visit our website at www.soulcafeonline.org. 